Hello and welcome to a special New Year's edition of Dream Team Coach TV brought to you by Betway. I'm Sean Burke, joining me is Andy Taylor, Jack Townsend and Nick Elliott. Coming up on this week's show. Yeah, we could learn something from the Leeds way, you know, at least lose entertaining. If you're going to lose, go out in a, in a blaze of glory. I mean, Nick answered that one for us earlier, didn't he? Yeah, Jack, if you were paying attention. I, I, I did say you're maybe one other person. I, honestly, I think the game's in a really sorry state, if I'm quite honest. Yeah, I believe um, it was Dean Smith, Aston Villa manager. Yeah, and I stand by that. I stand by that. because I. <laughs> well, I you I, still <laughs> think he's going to be the first to go. <laughs> Reinstate Village. Back Dean Smith. This year has not been a normal Christmas for obvious reasons. In a cruel twist of fate, we've all been forced to remain indoors, sit on the couch and watch football. What are we complaining about again? I was watching um, Crystal Palace Aston Villa the other day. And oh, I mean, I haven't looked at the stats, so I'd be very surprised if Grealish and Zaha aren't the two most fouled players in the league. And they do both get fouled a lot genuinely, but they also both go down a lot. A dive a lot uh, so it was quite it was quite funny watching those two sort of having a little unofficial competition trying to one-up themselves by uh well, how many fouls they could win but in this in the same breath i think Grealish did it and one of the commentators you know said that he's been clever there you know he's drawn the foul or whatever and then zaha literally 30 seconds later did the exact same thing and i think they would and the commentary was like well that's a blatant dive <laughs> <laughs> And I'm, and I'm obviously not saying that those commentators are, you know, they probably have no affiliation to Villa or anything against Palace. It was just the inconsistency of that one of that one moment. Honestly, yeah. if, if you ever watch a, a Villa game in the next couple of weeks, boys, just put a player come on Grealish. I guarantee five, at least five dives you'll see, like blatant dives that he gets free kicks for as well. Also, I, was, I just I was just thinking about Andy's. Uh, Andy's, you know, theory, of course, that the big club bias, because the last time on this show, it was all about referees and all that and then VAR. And then the very next day, I saw a stat that, saw, that said Liverpool have had the most uh, VAR decisions to overturned against them. Really? Yeah, but that's not, that's not, yeah, but this is my point, though. <laughs> some, no, but some, a lot of the VAR decisions are just blatant ones that, you know, would have been given anyway. A lot of those, I guarantee, would have been Salah's 10 yards offside and they've just had to, like, show that it was offside. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. It's the one... It's the one well, but if, if, if anyone can get hold of that and see how many of those were Salah being 10 <laughs> yards offside, <laughs> that would be cool. 10 yards, that's some sort of record. I just can't... I actually just baffles me that you can't see that there is a bias there, to be honest with you. I, I honestly, I think the game's in a really sorry state, if I'm quite honest. I think... I don't, I don't know whether it's just because I'm watching a lot of football at the moment, but... The amount of diving is actually obscene now. We've got some stats here now. Grealish is top of the table with 65 fouls and Zaha second with 42. It's actually a bigger gap than I expected. But, but I'd love to know how many of those are legitimate fouls, though. <laughs> yeah, that is I mean, I mean, I mean, the Villa-Chelsea game, he's left his foot in on Christensen to get the foul. It was quite funny, obviously, uh, Aston Villa scoring a goal when an when a opposition player was down injured because they were quite angry about that when Leeds did that against them in the uh, championship to the point that we had to let them score a goal. But we, we, won't, we won't bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will talk about that match now. Uh, Chelsea's draw against Aston Villa is another reminder of just how bonkers this season has been. At the beginning of this year, every single one of us predicted Aston Villa to be relegated. At the moment, they're driving towards European football. Hopefully, Grealish isn't at the wheel. Uh, but what is the secret to their success? How, how are they keeping it up so long? I'm going to just say my piece on Villa. I mean, have, I don't know if you, are you going to bring up our, uh, my, what, what me and Nick thought about who was first to get the chop. Yeah, I believe um, it was Dean Smith, Aston Villa manager. Yeah, and I stand by that. I stand by that. because I, <laughs> well, you, I, you still <laughs> think he's going to be the first to go? <laughs> Reinstate Village. Back Dean Smith. But no, I mean, I just, as I, as I say, my eyes get opened when a team plays against Wolves. And I just looked back to when Wolves played uh, Villa last year. And I looked at their lineup uh, Keenan Davis, Samata, Nakamba, uh, Harold Rahan, uh, Esri Konsa was playing right back. You've got Nyland in goal. That team was a championship outfit. And they've made lots of additions in the summer. And it is a rarity that you get so many players that come in and just click. I cannot believe they've done it. Dean Smith. What a manager. I mean, you know, we talk about Bielsa going up for some FIFA awards. I mean, Dean Smith's got to be in the, in the reckoning. They've made some unbelievable signings. I mean, Ollie Watkins, she, I mean, what a player. I mean, he's, he's up there with Raul Jimenez in terms of what he actually offers. Um, 
you know, Matty Cash, look, they've, they've, they've paid over the odds, but I mean, fair play, he's, he's doing all right. And I don't know, I just, I've never seen so many players come in and click. So it must be down to Dean Smith's management, it has to be. So, I mean, I, I definitely take back anything I've ever said. It, as I say, it pains me to say it about Villa because I'm mm-hmm. not meant to like them. But, you know, I just watched that Chelsea Villa game the other day and Villa were just, just comfortable. They looked like they were a top six side. You'd think Chelsea would be the same considering the players they brought in. Like three out of five of us picked uh, Werner as one of our uh, top scorer picks. But, I mean, it's not like he hasn't scored at all. But I don't think he's quite cracked on yet. I think with, with Werner, I mean, I, I, I defended him a few weeks ago on, the, on this show. And I've, I'm still inclined to do the same thing. But I do think the last few weeks, he looks particularly lost, yeah. kind of playing out wide, like really, like really weirdly frequently just running it to the corner flag. <laughs> like yeah. It's something going wrong when you see a player very often, like so frequently having it by the corner flag and like playing it off a defender to try and win a throw in in the corner I was like what what's happening there but the yeah. only problem is I think that he would probably want another go through the middle but Giroud is doing very well scoring goals and in fact Abraham's scoring goals as well when he plays in there I know everything's not clicking but actually those two are scoring goals so it's quite difficult to say let's put the bloke who hasn't scored in 10 games through, <laughs> through the middle and drop those two well like, while we're on the topic then uh, I think it's about time we made some new bold predictions to start the new year with so, I mean, first of all, I guess for Chelsea season, do people see Frank Lampard sticking around until the end of the year or the end of the season, should I say? I can't, I, I can't imagine they'll get rid of him. I yeah. think they'll give him a season mm-hmm. at least. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Well, he's, he's had one. He's had a season. If there's one club to chop a manager, it's Chelsea. Yeah. But I honestly don't think Roman cares anything about the nostalgia of having a club legend there. I think... If they drop any more points in the next few weeks, he will be probably banging down the door of Allegri, maybe. So they're sat at sixth at the minute. Mm-hmm. Like we, know, we all know it's that close that they could easily drop bottom mm-hmm. half of the table with a couple of losses, couldn't they? Well, that, well, look, that's, this, that's the problem, isn't it? Like This season has been like a little rotating uh, you know, finger pointer. Solskjaer, Arteta, Lampard. Which one of them is a fraud this week, and which one of them is actually quite good and underestimated? You know, at the moment, yeah. you know, the the baton Arteta sort of passed the baton onto Lampard when Arsenal beat them, and then this is why these predictions are often made to look stupid because in a month's time, Chelsea might have won four games in a row, yeah. and Man United might have lost four, and it's like, oh, actually, I was right the first time when I said Lampard was good and Solskjaer was a fraud. I forgot. <laughs> Should we look at the end of the table? Uh, do you think Big Sam will keep West Brom up? I mean, he just got us. He did get a point at Liverpool, to be fair, which like routine that position is not bad. Were you annoyed about that, Jack? I uh, it was. I mean, you just can't bet against Sam to come in and just grind it out. Like <laughs> fair I think play he will. To West Brom, I think fair he play will. to West Brom, and I, I, I've got every confidence, like Andy, that you yeah. know. He's the right man for the job to get him out of that sticky situation. I'm also not buying into the Fulham revival as well. And and I know they've been playing okay, but that's just not enough there for me. I honestly think Sheffield United have still got more of a chance than Fulham staying up there. Really? Yeah. That's pretty bold. We asked for bold. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rock bottom table. You think Sheffield United are more likely to stay up than Fulham? Yeah, I mean, I think they're both going down, but I think. Sheffield United be third last. Yeah. But I think, actually, yeah, go on. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say Sheffield United will definitely finish with Fulham. I think that's my. I guess that's bold enough as they're the worst yeah. ever team in the Premier League. So. <laughs> Any other bold, bold predictions? Any steam and football hot takes before the end of the year? Bamford, I... Golden Boot at the Euros, maybe? Wow. <laughs> that's a big one. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously I love Paddy, but that that would be. A, I don't think he should even be uh, called up for England, to be honest. Really? You reckon? Well, like, like, I mean, he he's got more goals if, than Harry Kane. If he if it happened, he would it would you could understand why, but um, I don't know. It's all like it's all, it's a whole system thing. I think only I think he might have missed the most big chances in the league as well this season, or maybe one other player has missed more. Yeah, but look at the chances Salah misses, and we don't. Oh, I know, I know. Then. I say, well, Kane, Kane, and Salah are both always up there for the same for the same metric. But I just think if not, it's not the, it's not quite the same. I don't know. You, it's a, it's a it's a system thing, and I, I know I'm a broken record by trying to deflect anything good that happens onto Bielsa. But um, mm. if you if you 
took any of our players out and put them in another another team, especially at an international level, or whatever, would, would, <laughs> yeah. they, would they be well, as Bamford, effective? Bamford up top for Brazil, do you reckon? Name yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> You're decent. Bam, Bamfordinho. Jack, any uh, any bold predictions? Bold for predictions. I might, I might say City not to finish top four. Okay. All right. That's quite cool. I like it. I like it. Sit, sit, That's City cool. City are finishing second for me, I think. Yeah, so, I think so just... I'd, I'd, say that, I'd say that's a bold claim from Jack. I'm close yeah. to saying Villa top four as well. Top four? I would, I, 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 sixth, top six. Top six, yeah. Top I six, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as four. I'm going to say Villa definitely top six. They'll be knocking on the door of top four. Uh, we're going to finish this year with a quiz, uh, testing the guys on just how much they remember from the season so far. Uh, if we need a tiebreaker, we'll just see who can guess how many Bruno Fernandes penalties there have been to the nearest hundred. Uh, also, this was filmed on December 29th, so in case any details of these questions change between now and when this goes out. First question. Who has hit the woodwork more times? Rodrigo, Timo Werner or Leandro Trossard? The answer is Timo Werner. Ah, what? With I mean, Trossard didn't, have like, didn't Trossard have like five in one game or something stupid? He's hit the Woodwork four times, so yeah, he's got he's got a decent a decent tally himself. All right, question two: Which player has missed the most big chances according to the Premier League website? Patrick Bamford, Ollie Watkins, Calvert Lewin, or Chris Wood? Well, I mean, Nick answered that one for us earlier, didn't he? Yeah, Jack, if you were paying attention. But I, I, I did say maybe one other person, if you, mm. if you were listening. So I maybe did. one of the other person was... I'm not having it being Chris Wood, though. No way. I mean, they barely have a shot, do they, Burnley? Well, the answer is Chris Wood. Oh, yes, that makes no sense. Burnley don't even get into the opposition half, let alone Chris Wood having enough shots. When you when you when you read it out, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's the play I was trying to remember earlier." When you said Chris Wood, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> eleven, eleven chances. That's outrageous. So Bamford ten, Watkins nine, Calvert Lewin eight. Next question: There are five players currently on six goals in the Golden Boot race. Name three of them for a point. It's a very strange like number. What are these all like equal eight in the race or something? <laughs> You know, I'll say name. I'll say name two. I'll make it a little bit easier for you. Just name. I just copy and paste the whole Premier League archive in. <laughs> there you go. It's probably in there. They're in there somewhere. <laughs> well, it's definitely not Chris Wood. <laughs> <laughs> he could. He could be leading the whole thing. Uh, if you got one, I'm going to say you can have half a point. The players are Tammy Abraham, Danny Ings. Oh, so, and he's got a point. Sadio I Mane. Yes. Marcus Rashford. Yes. And Ollie Watkins. So if you got one of those, you can have half a point. Which side has the most yellow cards so far this season? Is it Aston Villa, Fulham, or Leicester City? I mean, Villa should have way more for the diving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the answer is Leicester City with 33. Oh, Jack, gosh. you got it. 33 <laughs> yellows? Yeah. Getting stuck in for Leicester. Who's been Fulham, getting them? Fulham, 31. Johnny Evans, probably. Yeah. John, oh yeah, actually, Johnny Evans has been sent off, so hasn't he? So, yeah. yeah, Jamie Vardy has been caught offside the most times of any player this season. But how many times is that? Ten, twelve, or fourteen? And how far was he? Was it ten yards? Like <laughs> <laughs> combined. <laughs> but the answer is fourteen. 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 Yeah. Ollie Watkins is next with thirteen. All right, according to the Premier League website, which team has had the most clearances off the line? <laughs> West Brom, Sheffield United, or Newcastle? I can picture one team doing a couple, so I'm just going to have to go with that. I can't picture any other team doing like, it. I, I can picture all three of those just constantly getting it off the line. Yeah, <laughs> non-stop. The answer is West Brom. Oh. Four. Jack's, Jack's, Jack's collecting points here at a decent rate, yeah. West Brom have four, the other two have three. Okay, which player has been dispossessed more times this season? Is it Raheem Sterling, Adamola Luckman, or Mo Salah? So out of those players, who's been dispossessed more times? Andy, it's not going to get much better because the answer is Raheem Sterling. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Be lads. <laughs> right in there. I just uh, feel like I see, all I see from Salah is just like dilly dallying on the edge of his box and then someone's nicking it off him. But then if he does go. keep it, it goes in the top corner. Uh, Zaha is top. He's been dispossessed 44 times this season uh, overall. Right. Back in October, we saw one of the results of the season as Aston Villa beat Liverpool 7 2. Watkins got a hat trick and Grealish got a double. But who scored the other two for the villains? Again, I'll give you a half point for each one. Oh, man, who scored in that game? I feel like I've picked a picture someone. The answer is John McGinn and Ross Barkley. Oh, he's got them both. Yeah, yeah. I, so, uh, I had Barkley on there, but I took him off. Arsenal got a long-awaited home win in the league against Chelsea over Christmas, winning 3-1 on Boxing Day. Uh, but who did the Gunners beat in their last league home victory back in early October? Such a long time ago, oh but can God. you remember? They won another game, did they? <laughs> <laughs> you saying they've won more than one game? <laughs> okay, uh, the answer is Sheffield United. Yes. Mm. They beat Andy. They beat Man United at Old Trafford. Remember, we made a whole big deal about it. Yeah, I, I was just the only win I could think, and I was just hoping <laughs> my mind. I, I, I had I, it my, in the Emirates. My logic was literally just be well. If, you've, if you're losing to Arsenal at home, you're probably the worst <laughs> team in the league. <laughs> <laughs> checks out. His logic checks out. <laughs> yeah. Tottenham briefly raised title hopes after a clinical game against Man City, winning 2-0 with only four shots on goal. A very complimentary uh, writing style in this question. Uh, I wonder who wrote this one. Uh, City had a lot more efforts, but couldn't score with any of them. How many shots did they have that night? Was it 18, 22, or 25? That is a lot of shots. The answer is 22. Oh. Hard luck, Jack. Your two lads got it. Oh, Andy, you've had a tough time. Well, they're all based around top six clubs and I ate them all. <laughs> <laughs> Classic big club bias. It, yeah. There's <laughs> nowhere where it's, nowhere is safe from big club bias. Okay, well, I can reveal in third place with 2.5 points is Andy Taylor. Two and a half. Top club bias. Top club bias. In second place with four points is Jack Townsend. Oh, have a victory chomp of that burger there. And in first place with eight and a half points is Nick Elliott. Absolutely eight smashed it. Can we just oh, do a grass. screen share quickly, Nick, just so you haven't got Premier League stats up on you? Uh, <laughs> well, this is pretty much the only time I don't have Premier League stats open. On my computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do spend half my life with that page open. So yeah, it's it's finally it's finally come to fruition. Before we go, we're each going to set a footballing New Year's resolution for our respective clubs. It could be something small like winning more aerial duels or something big like Arsenal winning two matches in a row. So, who's up first? Jack, any New Year's resolutions for Liverpool? Just to win. <laughs> keep, keep up the winning mentality. Just bring it, it out. Going. Keep it going. Show it's keep not it not Yeah, you're, you're in one of the few teams who are probably, or sets of fans who are probably relatively happy. Uh, mm. And there hasn't been too much uh, motion in the ocean uh, on your season so far. Everybody else has had a, a bit of a yo-yo. Uh, Nick, what about Leeds? Well, I quite like your suggestion of win more aerial duels, to be honest, because we do actually lose quite a lot of those. So, <laughs> <laughs> But um, mine would just be to, to stay true to the Bielsa way, because there's, every single time we drop points, there's a, there seems to be a huge you know, cultural war debate. Oh, he needs to change his style. It's so naive. And then from my point of view, we're, we're on target to stay up, which is the mm -hmm. main goal. So for this season, keep doing what we're doing. So yeah, keep, keep, stay true. Don't listen to the, uh, you know, the pundits that have watched us play four times and only found out Bielsa's name last year <laughs> and think that they, they know his style better than him. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way Bielsa's listening to those people anyway. There's no way he's going to change his style if we've right, learned yeah. anything about this man. Yeah, well, hang on, what, hang on. Sorry, Stan Collymore <laughs> said that we should put more points <laughs> behind the ball. Okay, I might try that. I need to rethink my decades, yeah, decades yeah. long career. Right, Andy, what about Wolves? <clears throat> well, I think it's just I'm actually hoping for teams to suffer as opposed to being a personal one for Wolves. I hope Arsenal finished 
15 or lower <laughs> with that. I just I just love it. I love seeing them down there. It's brilliant. I think it's, it's good for the game. your club, Andy, right? Your club. Don't worry about my club. Okay? <laughs> no, but I get I I almost get more enjoyment almost than seeing <laughs> Arsenal lose at home to Burnley as I do Wolves winning. I genuinely do. I love it. Uh, I also want West Brom to go down. That would that would be really handy for me. It's hard cuz I think Graz made a point off air. Wolves have just We've actually been depleted so much. Like we've lost so many key players that it's hard to like. I can't. I would love to sit here and go top six Wolves, but we just don't have the squad depth. I'm going to hope that we finish above Villa. I think that's going to be my one, like my main one. I, I genuinely hope Arsenal finish below 15th and West Brom will go down. I really like those. I've got three. What What about this? Wolves finish sixth, Arsenal finish seventh, or Wolves finish eighth and Arsenal finish 15th. <laughs> uh, oh, God, that's a good one, that, isn't it? <laughs> Europa, Europa League football or just endless nights of like comedy of just seeing yeah. how bad Arsenal are doing? Like, I'm going to go Wolves because it's my team. But oh, it's very close. Yeah, it's, yeah. I've thought, the fact that I thought about it shows there's a passion <laughs> yeah. there. Now, I hope we finish above Villa. I think we'll, we'll have a good season if we finish above Villa. For Arsenal, honestly, at this age, just, just please score some goals. Even if we're still losing, like at least just give me something to watch in the highlights. <laughs> That's all I ask. Your, your very hopeful wish is to lose four three instead of <laughs> yeah. We could learn something from the Leeds way, you know. At yeah, least, yeah. If, 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 you, if you're going to lose, go out in a, in a blaze of glory. Well, not even glory, but at least, at least, <laughs> at least, at least, at least, make sure you're first on match of the day. Yeah, exactly. Give me something to watch in the evening at the very <laughs> least. That's all I ask. Um, but yeah, and uh, please. Please don't be relegated as well. That would be nice. Well, thanks very much for those New Year's resolutions. Uh, I hope they all work out for you. Um, Not the Arsenal um, finishing poorly one from you, Andy. But everything else, yeah, fill your boots. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Dream Team Coach TV, brought to you by Betway. From all of us here at Dream Team, uh, Happy New Year. And we'll be back again soon for some more football nonsense. But until then, take care.